What's up everybody? Let's take a look at this static electricity question. So you're going to rub this sphere, charge it up, and the first part of the question is asking how do you know what the sign of the charge is or design a lab to figure that out. So they do give you two possibilities. They give you some conducting spheres. That's one possibility. And then the other thing they give you is some parallel plates. Okay, um, I honestly can't think of a way you can do the first part, but the second part seems pretty straightforward. So since you can know which one is positive and which one is negative, essentially you can just take a couple parallel plates, right, charge them up. If you know which one is positive, let's say this one happens to be positive and this one is negative, and then you just observe what happens to the sphere. So if the sphere moves, let's say the sphere moves this way, for that to happen, you know that there must be a negative charge on the sphere. Okay, so that seems pretty straightforward. Um, you just kind of write, write that up, what I just said. Question B, so now we're going to uh, charge up sphere one, and this time they say you're gonna do N number of rubs. So in other words, if you rub this, if you rub this five times, one, two, three, four, five, and it's going to take on, you know, a, a certain number of charges. In this case it's going to say well we're going to assume that it's going to be n times q. So they're kind of assuming that each rub gives the same amount of charge on the sphere. Okay so then they're going to touch them together. Boom this touches here. So let's say this sphere 1 has a charge of n q and you're going to touch them together. Spheres are all equal, everything's equal about them. So if that happens, then each sphere should essentially take on half the charge, right? So they're asking what's the net charge on each? So it would just be one half NQ on each, right? One half NQ and one half NQ. What is the property that this is um, associated with this? So basically the charges are conducting, right? We have charging by conduction, we have charging by friction, we have charging by induction, um, and in this case, this is when you're touching, that's conduction. Induction is when um, one sphere, maybe it's moving close to another sphere, so maybe this is positive, for example, and as you move it close but not touch it, these take on negatives, this takes on positives, and then let's say you touch this sphere to something else, like you ground it, if you were to ground that sphere, this positive, essentially it's going to push the positives out, right? And then when you disconnect it, since you push positives out, what remains is simply a negative charge. So that's charging by induction, induction. And then friction, that's actually which, how you charge up the sphere in the first place, right? So one other property maybe you talked about, um, here, when it says property of the spheres, uh, you might have said something like conservation of charge. In my opinion, I think that's a, a fine response as well. Um, it's kind of unclear about what exactly they're asking about, but that's true as well, right? You, charge needs to be conserved. If we started with NQ, then each one's going to take on half because you want the total to add up to NQ. So the next question is asking about essentially deriving this equation over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on the next page. So to solve this, we're going to use our good old FPDs. So let's do that first. So we know that gravity is pulling down on this sphere. We'll say that's mg. And then we know there's a tension in the string. And then we know that there's going to be an electric force pushing this way. We'll call that Fe. Okay, and here's our angle. So as usual, we, we are going to want to, you know, break down our um, tension here. So we have some tension going here. We'll call this T cosine theta. We know there's some tension this way. We'll call it T sine theta. Since this is an equilibrium, we'll just set that up, the equilibrium situation. So in other words, the x's here should be equal to each other. So let's write that as T sine theta should be equal to Fe and T cosine theta should be equal to Mg. 
So we're just setting up the, those equalities. Um, we are trying to uh, get to this equation right here. So hopefully you can see um, we can do, you could substitute and solve. I'm just going to kind of divide both sides, right? It's a little bit easier here because t's will cancel. And then you, you end up with that tangent theta as, of what they're looking for. So we're going to have tan theta equals Fe over Mg. Now we do have to find Fe. So remember electric force, we'll use Coulomb's law here. Fe equals KQ1, Q2. So we already found those from the other on the other side, right? Q1 was 1 half NQ. And then Q2 would be the same thing, right? Now you could, I guess you probably should just square that whole thing since they're both the same. 1 half NQ or 1 fourth N squared Q squared. And then we will be dividing by the distance between them, right? Which is D squared. So I'm out of space here, but hopefully you can see once you substitute this into here, do a little bit of algebra and you should end up with their original equation. So I'll leave that up to you to do the algebra. So letter C, um, this is, we want to create a linear graph, right? And so you can see this equation, it's uh, pretty messy. You got a tan theta, you got some squares going on. Um, ultimately, we're trying to solve for charge. So you can rearrange this equation many different ways. You know, ultimately you're looking for your y over x, and from there you can use your slope to get some useful information. Um, so again, there's multiple ways. Uh, we can say tan theta divided by, you could just take that whole mess right there if you want. Um, so I could go k n squared divided by 4 mg what is that? Oh, D. <laughs> For mg d squared, right? And that's equal to q squared. So you could just do that. This would be your vertical axis. This would be your horizontal axis. Remember k, k, 4 mg. These are just constants. So you could also, oh, d is too. You're keeping that constant as well. So you could just plot tan theta and n squared as well. Um, and then that would just give you a q squared times that constant. Either way is fine. So how do you want to know, or you know, what are you gonna do? We're we'll just linearize this, correct? So you're just gonna draw a best fit, okay? And essentially the slope here, the way I did it initially, the slopes, this would be our tan theta, and I'm not gonna write that, but this would be the mess down here. So the slope is gonna be equal to Q squared, right? So if, n, like we were assuming in this problem that n here was constant, not constant, but um, every n that you did is going to put the same amount of charge. Every time you rubbed it, it's going to be the same amount of charge. So if that is true, this should be a nice line. You can draw a BFL. You can find the slope. The slope is equal to Q squared. If it is not true, then you would not get a line, right? So if there's no consistency, maybe it looks like this. Maybe it's not even, maybe it's just weird because you are you have human error, right? So um, anyways, you would kind of want to describe this linearization process um, and, and go from there. All right, let me know if you have any questions.